Today on our show, Wonder Woman wages and a Watchmen we do. That's what we're going to talk about today on Fat Man on Batman. Who's that in Poison Ivy's garden? It's Kevin Smith and Mark Borgardo. Two Fat Men on Batman. Welcome to Fat Man on Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. Hi, I'm Mark Bernardi. Wonder Woman continues to dominate at the box office. How much has it made, Mark? $578 million dollars worldwide okay so it's done all right it's you know nothing to sneeze at <laughs> good lord uh well who uh, everyone could have guessed this yeah i mean it's a long time coming she has never had her own movie and uh, the, the if drop. you make an aud- a movie for an audience that is underserved <laughs> they fucking show up in droves totally and the, the drop off week after week has been record setting least small most comic book movies fall pretty hard in yeah, second like week. She maintained. 60, 70%. She held. She held like 40 She survived in no man's off. land. She did. The whole world was waiting for her. I am no man. I am Diana of Themyscira. Mm, sexy. Um, you know what she didn't get, though? What? Hey. All the monies. All the money. Story broke this week. Uh, a specious story at best. Yes. Uh, backed by not entirely solid numbers. It's a true story, but not... Oh, you're missing a lot of information. Uh, the story... Who published it? L? L.com published a story that said that Gal Gadot was paid $300,000 for Wonder Woman. And they said, compare that to Henry Cavill, who was paid $14 million to be in Man of Steel. And I read mm. that and I was like, well, I know that's not true. <laughs> that can't be quite There's right. There's no way on earth. He didn't get $14 million for fucking Batman v Superman. No. He didn't get it for fucking Man of Steel. He might never get $14 million. I'm they're with not you on that. Anybody. And it's not because he's not a good actor. He's a wonderful guy, but like... Mm. They're not paying that money anymore. That's debt money. That is Downey Jr. money. You ain't kidding. Well, he's fucking... He's like $40 million. Yeah. Probably. It's I mean, a guess. Harrison know. Ford got what, like 30 to show up for a half an hour in, in Force Awakens? And run from those round monsters? Pretty much. Oh, God damn it, Chewie. And get stabbed <laughs> by the dude from Guys. <laughs> uh, who I like quite a bit. The He's guy. a good actor, man. I never watched that. The guy said guys. Girls. Guy Sorry, guys. the opposite. I never watched that show, but he's fucking dope in that movie. He's he's great. He's and I awesome. saw him in something else recently where I was like, wow, that guy's a really good actor. Um, all right, so wait. So yeah. Wonder Woman, uh, they said underpaid. Gal Gadot, three hundred thousand. Mm. Henry Cavill got fourteen million. What the fuck? As a clickbait kind of thing. Yeah. Henry Cavill didn't get fourteen million to be in the movie. Henry Cavill was paid what four hundred thousand? Something like that. So there's a gender gap, definitely pay gap of a hundred thousand bucks between Wonder right. Woman and Superman, which is right. yeah. If you want, that's a story, absolutely. Totally. But fourteen million. That's what he got. All in, back yes. in, with the bonuses and shit. Right. Once the movie went into high profitability, which means that Gal Gadot, unless she's got a crappier deal than him, probably has the same perks and bonuses mm-hmm. based on box office performance built in her contract, which very mm-hmm. well means she could fucking walk away with as much as he did, if not more. I think this movie might wind up doing be- better than Man of Steel. It is entirely possible. And I think that some of that's also based on uh, merchandise sales mm-hmm. and like rights, facial rights licensing. Right. They will sell a fuck ton more Wonder Woman toys than they did of Man of Steel. Than they I sold absolutely Man of Steel agree. Toys. Absolutely. Like she, she will come out quite all right for this. And because it's doing as well as it's doing and showing really no signs of, of falling off, mm-hmm. she's get to renegotiate her contract for Wonder Woman 2. Trust me, she ain't making 300,000 bucks next no, time. No, no. And like, and also to put this into context, Stars for superhero movies are often, especially for the first outing, paid very low. Marvel was the king of like lowballing everybody. Hemsworth and Thor. Hemsworth and Thor gets one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh my God, you're kidding? Yes, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Adam Driver got five hundred thousand for Star Wars: Force Awakens because again, he's the villain. You know, he's he's a super important part of that. I don't know what Daisy Ridley got. But it probably wasn't that, and but also he was on Girls. He was on Girls, he has like, he, like a rep, and, and like he's been working. Daisy Ridley, I'm sure, did something, but that was the big. That was the big movie thing. for her. You know, nobody is getting paid. It was a big movie for him too, but he'd been in a movie prior to that or two. Yeah, he was in Patterson, I think, last year. The nominated. like he's he's done some work. He's in that Tina Fey, but this is where I leave you. Yeah, before the Star Wars movie. But regardless, we're not regardless, here to fucking argue about his wages. Everybody gets six figures when they start these things, either mid or low. Six Do you figures. know why? Because the star of these movies is the character. That's yes. what Marvel says. Marvel's like, we love Robert, but the star of Iron Man 
is Iron Man. Yes, except, and this is the thing, Robert was the last one to get that kind of money. Yeah. To be like, hey, I'll be in your Iron Man movie. You've got to give me like $5 million to be an Iron Man. I want it really badly, and I'll pay for the insurance out of my own pocket, but I'm still a movie star, and you got to get me this money. And when he signed for Iron Man 2, he got fucking paid. Well, it's, it's close, but yes, you're absolutely right. On the first movie, mm-hmm. they fought his hiring tooth and nail. Mm-hmm. They didn't pay him anything. He worked for, I'm not going to say scale, but he, I don't think he got $5 million. Mm. I think he got, I don't think he got entry level 150 or 300 but it was mm. not huge. Not huge. Um, and then they only had him for one picture. Yep. And then the movie took off, and they went back, you know, for two, and mm. then he was, okay. He and I think that, on his money. I think that was the movie got 25 30 and yeah. then it just kept going like up Avengers, like you get him for Avengers, you're going to pay him $50 million to show up for Avengers. You put him in Civil War, suddenly the Captain America sequel is part, you know, mm. fucking Iron Man. Suddenly yes. the Spider-Man movie is part Iron Man. Like, he just keeps collecting. But, again, he... It didn't start that way. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he was considered risky and they didn't want to pay him and shit like that. And then when there were sweet rewards, he made sure he got some and continues mm-hmm. to fucking get totally. some. And also, from what I understand, made sure his fellow actors got some as they well. They all got some bumps for Avengers because he helped them. Because he's a good guy. He's like, hey, come on. If I'm going to show up and we can't do this without everybody, everybody's got to get a taste. He's a good guy, but he's got a great agent. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the fuck is his agent yeah. deserves a but, but Marvel, wet their beak a little. Post Downey absolutely clamped down on what they're paying their stars because they realize they're going to have 30 of them in Avengers 3. That's why they're all going to die in Avengers, (laughs) kids, so that they don't have to pay them their exorbitant salaries anymore and they're going to introduce kitty versions. It reminds me a bit of uh, uh, Brian K. Vaughn's Why the Last Man deal for Vertigo, which was for Vertigo the last time they were giving away rights. Because he made so much fucking money off of Why the Last Man, translated into a dozen languages, printed all over the world. Like, he bought houses off the Why the Last Man money. Wow. And Vertigo said to themselves, you know what we have to stop doing? Giving this shit away. Why? Because it was creator-owned? Because it was creator-owned. And he got to keep it. Like, even Vertigo stuff today is creator participation. Right. But you can't take it out of Warner Brothers. You no, can't do you gotta anything. You got to go there first. You got to go there. And you can't leave. Ever. They learned that on, on Red with Warren Ellis for and, Wildstorm. And Preacher, too. Like yeah. Preacher is not at Warner Brothers. Nope. I mean, they get some, like, vanity credit for Vertigo, but it ain't a Vertigo jammy jam. It ain't a Warner Brothers show. And if it's not a Vertigo jammy jam, as we say in this business, it could go fuck itself. Yes. First time I ever heard that expression. Vertigo jammy jam. <laughs> um, back to Wonder Woman. Back to Wonder Woman. So, yes. God yes, she was fine. paid less than Superman. Yes, it's a crime. But no, it wasn't thirteen million and change yes. more than or less than super. It, it wasn't like a, 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 a salary hate crime. It was just a no. And I think I look. I don't know shit from shit, but if her deal's anything like Henry Cavill's, then she's gonna clean up on the back end. Do just because I guarantee you, this movie's gonna surpass. Yeah, Superman. Madison. Right now, it's like number two at the box office, and it's at yeah. how much? Five five seventy eight million worldwide. And and After, Man of Steel was like seven and change, if I yeah. remember correctly. I mean, not for nothing. Like, don't jinx it. There's a chance this fucking Wonder Woman gets close to Batman v Superman's grosses. I think it which does. was eight eight fifty eight eighty. Yeah, I think it definitely beats Suicide Squad. What was that? How high did it go? That went to seven fifty, I think. I think it. I think it. It, it crests too easy eight fifty before, and they will keep it in theaters for a good long while to eke out every last bit of it. Um, Here's what I was thinking about that movie. Hmm. You're doing a sequel. Mm-hmm. Um, the only person coming back, really, Gal. Yeah. Steve maybe comes back in some, you know, flashbacks or right. fucking a ghostly image of the mm. fucking dude. Or as the Martian Manhunter, which we pitched last time. That is, that's right. Mm. Please use that. Patty Jenkins, can you hear me, Patty? Can you hear me? <laughs> that is a good idea. Um, but, you know, technically, the only one they need back is her. Everyone else is yeah. dead yeah. in World War One. So uh, yeah, they died of what they die from World War One. <laughs> <laughs> they all got World War One and died. they was allergic to bullets. <laughs> so they it's not an expensive sequel from from the cast point of no. view. Like if you were bringing back a very expensive cast and they all lived, fuck. Um, especially because the movie did unexpectedly, or mm. you know they knew it was gonna do well, but it did don't better than anyone expected. So at least they don't have to do that. Yeah, it's not like a Star Trek movie where you got to bring the whole fucking bridge crew back. That's true. Um, the one person they don't have the option on to bring back so far is Patty Jenkins. Hold on. 
<laughs> I was about to do my spit take. Are you serious? They yeah. haven't locked that up yet? They have not locked that up yet. DC, lock that shit up. Lock it down. Put a ring on it. Oh, my. Yeah, if you wanted it, you better put a ring on it. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, That's honestly like, I think she's getting more press than Gal Gadot off of this movie. Like, every day I open up Google News, there's a Patty Jenkins article yeah. and stuff. They should. It's crazy if they haven't signed yeah. her yet. And it's going to cost them fucking money. Because what do you think she got paid first time? If Gal got 300 she didn't get more than Gal. No way they pay the director more than the fucking star of the movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works in that studio math. For I'm gonna take a things. guess and say, let's say tops, tops. She got what fucking gal got, 300k. Yeah. What does she get for a second one? I mean, if I'm her for the second one of these things, and you don't pay her like 7.5 or 10 million dollars to show up, I was gonna go five. You want even higher? I mean. The, so much of the reason why this movie works is because is of her. Because, of, her, because yeah. of the things that she fought for. Because the, the, the places she dug in her heels and said, no, you have to do a No Man's Land sequence. This movie lives and dies on whether this works or not. And here's where we know. And I don't think, honestly, if, if for nothing else than a PR reason, right. despite the fact she's immensely talented and she did a great job, but if they replace her, and if they replace her with a dude... Which there's oh, no... Rumor of that or anything, but he's just speculating. I'm speculating, especially because Hollywood has been known to do dumbass Hollywood Give him the example. Shit. Give him the example. Uh, you know who directed the first Twilight movie? Ooh, a woman named Catherine Hardwick. Yeah, you know, and it's a whole like YA thing. It's about this young lady who falls in love. Female lead, empire. Bella. It makes, I don't know. A lot of money. Billion dollars. You know who directs the second one? Chris Hardwick, her brother. <laughs> <laughs> the nerdist. It's like David Slade, I think, and then yeah, Francis they got, Lawrence. They got rid of her, like, they, and they brought got, in a dude, and then all of them were made by dudes. The rest were made by dudes. And it's like, okay, I guess we weren't paying that close attention to that kind of gender balance. That but won't happen again. It can't possibly happen here. Patty so Jenkins' name probably go down in cinema history because it looks like it's going to be a turning point for female directors mm. in the previously big boys club of comic book movie making. Yeah. I mean, and it's also a kind of... I remember if you seeing, can see it, you can, you can be, be it. it. I remember seeing some now a bunch of girls out there and women, mm -hmm. grown ass fucking women, are seeing Patty Jenkins do what she did. And now they're gonna go be it. I remember seeing some picture of, of Patty uh, running into Ava DuVernay at some Academy Award function or whatever, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's the highest grossing female director of all time. Here is the first black woman to be handed more than hundred million dollars to make a movie, which will be out next in time. In time. You know, and then there's. <laughs> Ava DuVernay's editing suite on the Disney lot is right, right next, next to, to Ryan, Ryan Coogler's, Coogler's editing suite. And so they're just Black Panther, literally to the spotlight, walking back and forth between each other, and they're checking shit out. Like it's we what a in, different Hollywood we're in right now. Absolutely, like we live in wondrous times when this is the world that we get, and it's all delivering on a way that that surpasses expectations. And it's also like you know, um, how about how about this? How about fresh take on something? You know what you're not going to get that out of? The same person you go to over and over again. And I'm not like fucking mansplaining this, nor am I fucking uh, betraying my gender and shit. But like, it's a lot of dudes, particularly a lot <laughs> of white dudes, been telling movie stories for years and years and years and years. So much so that people, audiences can predict the endings mm. of these stories and stuff mm. like that. I'm not chalking it all up to men, but largely yeah. been in charge. You get some fresh voices in there. It ain't white. It's not a white dude. Like, and I know I just alienated mm. all the right wingers, but <laughs> it's you're gonna get a better fucking story. I don't know how to say it, man. Be why? Because it's a fresher take. It's just somebody who's never done this story before. Like he said, man. You put Patty Jenkins on Wonder Woman. She fights for that fucking no man's land sequence. They marketed the whole movie on it. It's yeah. the most memorable sequence in the movie. It, it's right there. Yeah, it's a bit in the trailer where you're like. Holy shit. Where you're I'm like, this could be this. good. Yeah, yeah, this could work. So more power yes. to the Patty Jenkins and the Ava DuVernay's. DuVernay. DuVernay's. DuVernay. And the Ryan Coogler's of the world. Can we stop for a second, though, to uh, side track or mm. sidebar? Sidebar. Wonder Woman doing very well. Yes. Uh, for some reason, somebody dug up the Joss Whedon script this yes. weekend online on Twitter. It's one of those things mm. about Twitter where you're like, wow, fascinating. Somebody, uh, I don't know, it was a lady who dug up the mm. script for Joss Whedon's Wonder yeah. Woman and gave it a read and started like live tweeting the script. Yeah. And sections and lines. Which and he wrote like, like 10 years ago, I think. Yes. But to be fair, mm. he did write 10 years ago, but he did write a post Buffy. Yes. Um, 
And boy, they just fucking went after him again. It's so weird. I don't know that guy, but he seems like such a sweet guy. Yeah. I remember, remember after Avengers with the, the Black Widow thing? Mm-hmm. Like everyone, he had to leave fucking the Twitter. On, yeah, he left, he left the online world because he was like, I can't take it. And then just for no reason, like they pull out an old script of his and they're like, this dude's a dick and here's why. Let me kick him in the balls for 45 tweets. Leave him alone. Fuck yeah. it. He had a, he was, that, that was like. Yeah, I mean, like. That was then. This is now. But still, he did write Buffy. Like, he did write Buffy. He wrote years Buffy and with- years and he had help and there were other writers, mm-hmm. but it is his brainchild. And it is this, a female lead. Like, long before, you know, everyone's like, this is amazing that they're doing Wonder Woman. There's never been a female lead mm-hmm. before. There have been many female leads mm-hmm. before. But, you know, just maybe not as high profile as Wonder Woman. Woman right in the name and stuff. <laughs> but I just watched recently, and I know I'm going to get crucified online for saying this, but fuck them. I watched Charlie's Angels recently. Mm-hmm. Charlie's Angels plays like a Marvel movie. Go back mm-hmm. and watch it. Is they're, they're, they're fucking superheroines without the mask. Yeah. They even have secret identities. It's crazy. I watched that flick and I'm like, wow, this totally <laughs> fucking works. Um, you know, Supergirl had a movie. Electra had a movie. Mm. They Cat didn't Woman work. Catwoman had a movie. Who? Catwoman. Yeah, most yeah. of those didn't work. Yeah. But they did have a movie and stuff like that. But still, that's not the point. The point is, you're going after the guy that, like, for a while, he was the only person who could give you something, you know, that looked different. Like, here, he, he wasn't, at least, look, look at me. Whenever I tell a story, I'm like, it's two dudes. <laughs> and then I, you know, whatever they're in space or God or in front of a convenience store. Mm. But at least this dude was like, Oh, the hero is a girl who, you know, is the slayer. And she's like, I'm not even a weed and apologist or anything, but like, I thought that was unnecessarily yeah. not get, cruel, but just like, yeah, why? what do you kick him in the balls for? Is he, you know, fucking let's all be happy. There's a great wonder woman movie instead of shitting on the guy who wrote a movie that you didn't particularly care for that never got made. Never got made. I mean, I, I get the, the, the tendency towards looking at somebody who you've, you've seen as an ally and then realizing that at some point in his past that there was a mindset that he had that didn't fit into what you thought an ally would, would produce. Yeah. And like, who the fuck knows what kind of studio notes he got? Who knows what Warner Brothers insisted that he do on Wonder Woman? I'm not apologizing for him either. I, I met him once. Seemed like a nice guy. I love Buffy. I love Firefly. He loves Buffy. I love all of that shit. All I'm saying is you have no idea the circumstances behind that script, and you always have to allow for somebody to understand that they did a shitty job and rectify that, and to want to be better at that thing that you do. And also, to be fair, like when Wonder Woman opened, like he was one of the first people I saw yeah. tweet. It's like I saw it, Patty I Jenkins. It. Yeah, yeah, like he blew her up and stuff. So I don't know. That was just a weird kind of sidebar yeah. of like, really, you're going like. I mean, it's, it's one it of those... It didn't get made. Then maybe that's the reason it did not get made. Yeah. I mean, I remember, like, when I first heard that he was writing Wonder Woman movies, I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, Joss on Wonder Woman. Sense. Why not? Absolutely. And then I spoke to a couple of people who were on the inside who said, yeah, that script, not so much. Really? Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, clearly, saner minds prevailed, and they decided not to make it. And, and, the, and also, awesome. like, yeah, he's a good dude, and he's made great stuff, but, like, look, Everyone whiffs from time to time. Yeah. Especially if you produce that much fucking material and shit. Take it from the king of whiffs. <laughs> I know. But, you know, maybe maybe it wasn't up to fucking snuff. Don't mean that, that Batgirl's going to be bad. No. Tell you what, man. He seems like a self-correcting animal. He's going to, I guarantee you, and he seems very, very fucking self-aware and sensitive. Um, I guarantee you, if he sees that, it's going to factor into his fucking Batgirl script. Like, yeah, and, and, and not for nothing, but there was very little to compare a Wonder Woman script to 10 years ago and say, fucking point. here's the bar that I need to clear. And in a world post Black Widow, which whatever you think he did with that character, whether you like it or not, she's a major player in the Marvel Universe. Post Wonder Woman, there is no way you can't deal with Batgirl and the, the, the femme part of the Bat Universe with way more sense of responsibility than you might have done previously. Um, hmm. Hmm. Is there a world where they're like, maybe we give Batgirl to a woman? Or they're like, nah, fucking Joss Whedon, he did Buffy. What are you crazy? <laughs> fucking come on, get over yourself. Or is there a world where they're like, hey, you know, like, we gave Wonder Woman to a woman, and surprise, <laughs> it somehow worked out. Women maybe, seem to like it. Maybe we should give Batgirl to a girl and see what happens. It's. It, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from Joss Whedon. It's great, but it's like, if I like maybe and maybe maybe like you don't give a shit about that online conversation, mm-hmm. but I guarantee you this: 
I'm the guy directing Batgirl, and I read that online conversation about, like, did you ever read his Wonder Woman? <laughs> One of the first things that goes to my head is, like, I should not do Batgirl. Like, <laughs> but that's me, and I'm an idiot. Uh, I wonder if, like, there's any part of him that's just like... Yeah, I, you know, there's, there's a version in which... There's, there's a, a, a multitude of ways that this could go. There's the, he's just going to fucking do it because he wants to do it. He's got a great take on it. He thinks it's the right story, and he's going to write and direct it. There's a version And in again, which, he made Buffy, which is female And he heroine. made Buffy, and he made The Avengers, and he knows what he's doing. There's also the version where he's like, you know what? I'm going to direct it, and I will co-write it with a woman because I want that perspective. There's a version which he just produces it and oversees it, like sort of Feige style, like the... The Zack Snyder we always hoped that Zack Snyder would be, right. the actual like puppet master who's orchestrating all this shit, and he's the godfather above it, any of those things would be fine. I think he's got a sensitivity for this character and for this world that is only a benefit and not a hindrance. I agree. Um, all right, enough about that. Enough about mm. two guys not part of the par- process fucking speculating on shit way above our pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to another one of those. Uh, um, Wonder Woman... And Conan the Barbarian. Oh, yeah, tell him that. Yeah, did you that's ever, comic book news. That's fucking comic book news. DC and Dark Horse are going to co-publish a six-issue miniseries written by Gail Simone. Oh, oh great! Yeah, sweet Gail. And art by Aaron Lepresti, who did the Wonder Woman run from... What's two, her name? Uh, his name is Aaron Lepresti. Italian really? guy. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm not being this guy, but I mean... You Wait. got a female writer... Well, I think it's, it's more that they were on Gail's Wonder Woman run together. Fair. Believe me, yeah. and I'm not, uh, but it's just, it seems like. You could. The way the world is going now, people are starting to wake up and go like, maybe we should turn those genders over to those genders, those races over to those races. And you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not lobbying for, I'm just saying like, in well, a world where Gail Simone's writing it, like you could also get a female artist to draw it and then you got. You got something that gets that a lot of people excited? Comics is, by and large, a nostalgic medium. I thought you were going to say a boys club. <laughs> also a somewhat backwards-facing medium in that the, here's the thing that worked that people liked, let's just do it again. Right. Which is, hey, remember everybody loved Watchmen? Before Watchmen. Hey, remember when everybody loved that thing? Let's just do that again. Right. Hey, remember when we rebooted an entire universe? Let's reboot it again, because they love the reboot. So, hey, remember when everybody loved this Wonder Woman run? And let's make a big stink of Gale coming back to do Wonder Woman. Why not bring the dude who drew it that everybody also loved? Huge deal. I'm all for it, but it's just... I'm all for it because I loved, one of my favorite comics ever, is that What If, um, where What If Conan the Barbarian woke up in the 20th century? Have you ever seen that book? No. It's bananas, where it's like Conan wakes up in 1976 in New York, like during a blackout, and so it's nothing but, what are these demon co- demon dragons and roaming? The-? Like he's just hacking Volkswagens to pieces. So it's the Conan version of Splash. Absolutely. It's man out of time. It's, it's, which is dumb as shit, but I fucking love it. Totally. Because what if, what ifs were my jammy jam? Like, we love what ifs. Oh, man. So if this is a big what if, like how does... How does either Wonder Woman travel back to this Sumerian, the Sumerian, the Hyperborean age? Well, she's ageless. She was alive back then. Yeah. Or does Conan somehow end up on Themyscira, which, again, not the worst idea in the world. No. Um, either way, who gives a shit? Like, I'll read it. I like, I like both those characters. I would Just like the idea of crossing them over is kind of badass. Yeah. I mean, swords and swords. There you go. Um, we're, all we're all for that. We're all for that. Watchmen. Here's the thing. Damon Lindelof, he of Lost, he of The Leftovers, he of uh, Prometheus. Is that what it was? Indeed. Um, he of Tomorrowland. Ooh, I love Tomorrowland. Mm. He co-wrote it with, what's his? Uh, yeah, Jeff, Jeff Jensen. Jeff Jensen, your boy. My boy, Jeff Jensen. Um, he is uh, talking about, and it's early, 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 but doing Watchmen, wait for it, as an HBO series. Now, yes. Mark, when I was a child, first reading Watchmen in the late mm. 80s, early 90s. Yes. Um, even the, the way back then, we would always say, this would be a great HBO show. Mm-hmm. Like, they should just do this as an HBO series. And so we said the same thing about Preacher, said the same thing about Sandman and shit like that. We now live in a world where that is actually <laughs> going to come to pass. That's fucking crazy. Um, yeah. What do you think? Do they do... The 12-issue miniseries that 
Zack Snyder so lovingly put up on the screen? I mean, the the problem with The Watchmen as a movie, and I, I don't think I like it nearly as much as you do, um, is that it's such a dense book yeah. that you have to, by its very nature of ad- adapting it, start dropping shit out of it. You know, and, and Zack loves it so much that what we got was a very literal translation, but because you then had this little translation that to drop shit, you had like none of the... The, the the pirate stuff you yeah. had like none of these these awesome they did a standalone little cartoon movie with the pirate stuff yeah, yeah. but like none of none of the sort of meta textual stuff that helped deepen that work to such a degree you didn't really get the journal pages you didn't get any of that stuff Mm-mm. so like if you're going to do a version of this show that you can give an episode to an issue and like sixty minutes for every twenty two page book you ain't gotta fucking fight me dude I'm there I'm in the bag for yeah. this shit that being said. Mark raised an interesting mm. point before we went. Mm. I, I'm so literal minded. I'm an idiot. I, I'm like, well, they made Watchmen as a movie. Why would they do it again? Yeah. Or, or I said, why would they just remake the, why would they make the miniseries when we just saw a Watchmen movie? But Mark's point was like, maybe it's not the miniseries. Yeah. I mean, we, we have no intel whatsoever on what None. this thing could be. But there's also the world in which, I mean, The Leftovers was based on Tom Parada's novel. He wrote one book and they made three seasons of TV. At some point, you have to diverge from the book right. and decide to like take the spirit of the book and make your own new story out of it. Right. Like, who the hell knows? I mean, I, I would wager they're not going to do any before Watchmen stuff, but if you've got this world, this amazing world, like, what's the new story you could maybe tell in that world? The follow-up. Like, yeah. what would happen after, spoilers, Ozymandias' plan was put into motion and shit like that. That's kind of dope. Yeah. I'd watch that show, too. Look... I'm watching it regardless. Yeah, it's, but, it's, we both subscribe. Yeah. It's showing up anyway. That's it. We can't. <laughs> I already own HBO. I don't own it, but I got HBO. Fucking, I'm I'm in the bag. Yeah, I it. actually couldn't stop it from coming into my <laughs> house. And if I be fair, to. we don't want it. Yeah, but we're just kind of curious. Where's where? What version are they going to do? But it's too early to know. All we can tell you at this point mm-hmm. is it's happening. Yeah, and like not for nothing, but from the dude who navigated all of Lost and dealt with. What was probably the first real internet fandom and fan backlash in a mm-hmm. big way. Like, if there's a dude who understands the potholes of dealing with a thing like, a beloved thing like Watchmen, like, he knows where the bombs are. He's he a knows, fan. He's a comics kid. And he's a huge Jersey com- boy. He's a Jersey boy. He's a huge comics nerd. You know, and if you go back and watch Lost, you will see all of those sort of comic references and comic themes in there. I mean, there's, there's a handful of people who could do this, and he's one of them. There it That's is. all we got for you. Meh. That's it, man. It's a beautiful world. What a beautiful life. Oh, oh, oh. oh. A Watchmen shows in our fu- oh, fu- oh, future oh. on HBO. So oh, there'll be oh, oh. boobies and a lot of harsh language and lots of violence. <laughs> Flaccid dicks. That's true. Yeah. We're going to get the Game of Thrones dick treatment to the Watchmen. <laughs> You're going to see Dr. Manhattan's dick, which actually we saw a lot of yeah. in that Watchmen movie. So you're going to, they're like, you think you've seen it all when you saw the big blue dick? Wait till you see the comedian's cock. Wait till you see the, the Ozzy Mendez's cock. <laughs> Night owl dick. Thank you. Night owl's <laughs> fucking cloica because he's a bird. <laughs> fucking. Wait till you see the Spilk, Silk Spectre's dick. They will look up at my dick, and I shout for help, and I walk down and say, Yeah, all right. <laughs> I will drop my dick on their head. Um, Roar Shark's dick, which has different like spots all over it. Changes, makes What is it now? <laughs> it's a dick. It's still a dick. No. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy. Yeah. Nobody's asking, but I'm happy. There Spotted you go. dick. Uh, there it is, folks. For Fat Man on Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Mark Bernard. Tune in next time. Same fat time, same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith.